welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about droplets and what they are. Hang with me uh, for this one because droplets are not used very often, but they can they can be kind of cool. This tutorial is sponsored by our good friends at WP Engine. They've got awesome WordPress-centric hosting plans. Uh, go check out tutvid.com slash WP hyphen engine. I've got a link right down there in the description. There's a discount uh, if a tutvid.com viewer goes and buys hosting with them. Plus, you help support the site, so that's awesome. Droplets in Photoshop, what are they? Well, I guess let's start with uh, just me explaining what they are. So you've got a droplet. A droplet is this thing. It's just like an arrow that sits on your desktop that you take image files that you have, right? These circles are images. You grab these and you drop them onto your droplet. What happens then is the droplet goes and processes all of these images in Photoshop using some action that you've told the droplet to use to process all of these images. You can drop an entire like, you know, folder right onto uh, your droplet. You can process raw images. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do with them. So let's talk about how we can create a droplet and uh, then begin processing stuff with that droplet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to file and we're going to go automate and choose create droplet. So here with Droplet, the first thing you need to do is choose where you're going to save your Droplet. So we're going to save it right onto the desktop, and I'm going to name it just drop-me.app, and the .app, the Photoshop adds that file extension. The next thing we need to choose is the action which we're going to apply to the images that are dropped on our Droplet. So I'm going to go to my image action set, and I'm going to choose this color grade action here. Uh, you have an option to override action open commands. It's kind of complicated to explain what this does, but just know if you check this on, like 99 out of 100 times, your droplet is not going to work. Um, there's a very select few times when you're going to need to use this. Research it if you're interested in finding that out. It's kind of a pain in the neck to explain. Include all subfolders. Um, that just basically include, it is just saying, hey, if I drop a folder on this droplet, should I also process the images in all of the subfolders? Um, we're going to leave that shut off for now. Suppress file, open options dialogs. This allows us to like process a raw image and not have to see um, the raw image editor every sync for every single uh, raw image that is processed through Photoshop. It's a good idea to check that on. It just ensures stuff will go through smoothly. Um, suppressing color profile warning, same thing. We don't need to see all the dumb little warnings uh, that Photoshop is going to pop up. We're not working on, you know, Picasso's whatever Last Supper. He didn't do a Last Supper, but you know what I'm saying. Picasso's biggest, finest uh, piece of art. Uh, so we're not that concerned about, you know, sRGB versus uh, Adobe RGB or whatever, blah, 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 right? Uh, errors. I'm going to set it to stop for errors just because it's the easier way to go. But if you choose stop for errors and you process like a thousand images and like the, I don't know, 349th image has an error, the whole process is going to stop. So if you start a thousand images and you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning and a third of them are done and two thirds aren't, it's going to be a little annoying because you had this set to stop if it hits, it runs into an error. You can choose to allow it to just keep plowing through everything and just log errors to a file. You can do that and then choose where to save the text file. Uh, like that. Like I said, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go stop for errors. Then you can choose where to save the images that are processed with this droplet. So by choosing none, it's just going to open the images in Photoshop and they're all going to be sitting there in Photoshop. You can choose save and close, which is going to save them and just overwrite the image that was opened. Um, or you can choose folder and then choose where you would like to save them. So I'm just going to save these right to the desktop. I'm going to keep things simple here. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm not going to keep things simple. I'm going to go into images to process and choose this processed images folder. There we go, just like that. We also have this option to override action save as commands. If we shut that off, Photoshop is going to, again, this is a little complicated to explain, but Photoshop is just going to save our files as, you know, like JPEGs in whatever folder we choose to save them as. But if we run into an image that has some saving options, we're going to have to work with that file in order for it to get pushed through. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean in just a second, and you're gonna see why we're actually gonna to wanna to tick this on. But for now, we're gonna leave it unchecked. Next, you have your file naming convention. Um, all of this stuff, you can do whatever you want with it. Just make sure that you have a file extension as the last of all of your bits of data in here. So you can go like document name and then a serial number or serial letter and a date and all that. Just make sure you have an extension as like the last, uh, the, the thing that is going to come at the end of your file name, like .jpg or whatever, yada, yada, yada. Uh, compatibility, you can check on Windows, Unix, Mac OS, whatever. I'm going to leave it just as Mac OS here, and I'm going to hit OK. All right, so that's a lot of talk. Um, but what we've just done is we've created a droplet, and you can see this blue arrow shows up on our desktop where we chose to save our droplet. 
Now, on this droplet, if I go into here and go into my batch folder, um, I can actually, I can grab the entire batch folder. I've got six images in there, right? I can grab that entire folder and just drop it right on the droplet. And what's going to happen is Photoshop's going to open and process everything. But look at this, exactly what I was talking about. One of these images triggers a JPEG options sort of save dialog box. And the whole process grinds to a halt. This is only the second image. It doesn't process the rest of the images. Here, if I flip over to my finder and I go to processed images, you can see, well, great, we've got one JPEG, but none of the others have saved through. What we need to do is hit OK, and then the whole process finishes. But the problem obviously is, is now we have all of our images, but there was one JPEG file that really held everything up, this JPEG image right here. How do we prevent that from happening? Well, let's delete all these images right here, and let's just... Uh, Sub, uh, subtract. Let's just minimize our window. Jump back into Photoshop. Let's tweak that droplet that we just created. So we're going to go File, Automate, Create Droplet, and we're just going to choose to save the droplet the same place, same name. It's just going to overwrite the droplet. So it's just going to make this change. We're going to choose to overwrite action, save as command, and Photoshop says, hey, when this is on, blah, 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 blah. Basically, what's going to happen is we're going to hit OK. It's going to save over that. We need to go into our action now, Window Actions, because right now in our color grade action, see it right down here, we don't have any save as options. So we're not going to be saving anything that we're doing if we run the action or run, you know, push any images through our droplet right now. So what we need to do is select the last item here in this list under color grade and choose to record. And now we need to set some saving options. And we do that by just going file, save as, and we're going to save this right to our desktop. But here, this is what's important. We want to make sure we save the format as a JPEG. Now, when we do this, Photoshop is ignoring the file name and it's ignoring even where we're saving the document. So I'm just gonna name this like test or something. What it's gonna remember is the format and also in this JPEG options dialog box, it's gonna remember that I'm choosing a quality of let's say 10. I'm gonna hit okay. And, I, and now I can hit the stop icon down here and we've added this save option to our color grade action. So now that we've done that, we actually have to go create the droplet again because it doesn't automatically update. So we go automate, create droplet, right? Boom, we've got our actions selected. This is all we have to do. We've already set everything and just hit OK. It's going to save that over that droplet on our desktop, right? And now if I bring up that finder window again and I drag that entire batch folder and drop it on the droplet, you're going to see it's going to process everything. Boom, 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 just like this. Oh, processed images. You can see it flushed through all the images. I got no dialog boxes triggered in my face, and that's great. That means I could run an entire huge folder of JPEG images through, and they're all going to be saved out perfectly. Well, let's talk about raw images. We can take a raw image and drop it onto the droplet as well, or an entire folder of raw images. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do one. Drop it on the droplet, and you're going to see, boom, up pops Photoshop, and it looks like nothing happened. But when we go back, in our folders to the processed images, we can see that we have this raw image that's been converted to a JPEG right through Photoshop using our droplet. Now, I should add, sometimes when you're processing raw images, if you have uh, Camera Raw set to open a 16-bit image, you may need to go into your action and just create an additional step of the action where you convert the image from a 16-bit to an 8-bit image. And what that will allow you to do is by pairing that with your save options, you're always going to uh, ensure that your raw images are going to be saved out as well. Because the last thing in the world you want is to run a raw image through a droplet and have uh, like a save as dialog box that keeps popping up because then you're essentially just doing the raw images one at a time. If you can take 500 raw images, drop them on a droplet and boom, process them all. Hey, that's great. So that's it. That's how you create and edit droplets. And that's some of like the finer intricate details that have to do with droplets. They're very specific, and when you start using droplets, you're going to find that it's very helpful and stuff that you're going to need to figure out. Uh, so for droplets in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutfid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.